We are now in week two of the coffee cup prompt envelopes. This is what I created in week one out of an interdepartmental envelope. And this is what we are going to create today. Give me a moment to tell you a bit about my channel. I'm going to start with adding some color to these plain white envelopes. I have coffee in this glass baking dish. Dipping my white envelopes in that, I'll set those aside, allow those to dry. I'll probably use my um, hair dryer and get them to a dry in a rapid manner so that we can move on with this project. But let's just add a little bit of warmth to the product that we're starting with. So we have these two envelopes. And now I have a script stamp with vintage photo ink. I get a little heavy handed on this right side envelope. So I would avoid that if I were you, but I'm going to go ahead and cover it up. I realize the mistake that I've made. It's just way too much. So in any event, we'll leave it in and I'll show you how I covered that up. Then on the second envelope that I choose to stamp, I go a little lighter. So I just press that down in a few places. That's why I've pulled that stamp off of the wood block so I can manipulate it and stamp where I want and not where I don't. Just stress oxide spray in vintage photo is what I am using to kind of cover up all of that stamping that I have, thinking that this uh, wet baby wipe is going to move that around a little bit, which it didn't do as good as I would have liked. Go ahead and turn these over and do the same thing on the back. So there we have our two stamped envelopes. We've sprayed them with that Distress Oxide, and I've let them dry a bit. And now I will continue to add color by pulling out the mustard seed and the acrylic block that I had laying on my workbench <laughs> for utilizing those clean stamps. And I'll hit the ink with a little bit of water to make it um, movable and we'll just deliver the color in this technique. I've seen this technique used throughout YouTube on a number of different videos. So I don't know where it originally came from. If I did, I would cite that here, but I've seen it multiple channels. This is the mustard seed that I am just utilizing to cover. Now we're getting these envelopes pretty wet and because they're so wet, of course that glue has released, but I think that is a good thing because now I can ink around all of the edges, including the edges of the envelope flap, flaps. I'm utilizing Rusty Hinge Distress Oxide. We'll get this inked up and now determine how we want it to go together. I think if I stick it together like that, then I have that flap that will become part of my outside decor. And I have not glued the pieces back or the flaps back. So let's go ahead and glue this down. So we have the two envelopes connected together.
And I am going to cover the inside of that with one of these pieces of newsprint that I have been working on. And I kind of like that one with the little rusty hinge in there. So we'll set that aside, get that done. But I need something to decorate the outside of this. So I'm covering, I've cut some sheets of white paper. I am just covering it with Distress Oxide inks and Vintage Photo, Mustard Seed, um, Rusty Hinge. So those are the three main colors that I am utilizing. And there's no real method to how I'm doing this. I'm just covering all the white. That's my purpose. Cover the white with the three colors. And I kind of like the way that looks. So now I have that done. These are the three sheets that I did. And those three colors are all just a little bit different. So now I can utilize all three of those to create embellishments for the outside of this little journal, envelope journal. So I have, I just received these. I just ordered them off of Amazon. Once again, my Amazon storefront, you can reach by going to my website, which is twooldcrowsmixmedia.com. There is a page for shopping, which is my Amazon storefront, and everything I use in my videos, I put there for ease of you to find. So if you like these little leaf die cuts for your hotshot, pop on over to my website. I do make a small commission when you purchase off of my Amazon storefront, but it does not increase the price to you. So I'm going to hop over to my hot shot with these leaves, and then I'll meet you back here. So those are how those turned out. I have my camera a little high, so you can see my cell phone, which is what I follow along my videos with. I control my camera with my cell phone and I can see what you see in my cell phone while I'm filming. So there are our leaves. I'm just going to lay them out here on this sheet of white paper. For what reason? I think I'm going to hit them with some more Distress Oxide Spray because I think they need a little bit of red in them. And I did not use any red Distress Oxide in, when I was making this paper. So I have that Barn Red Distress Oxide Spray. I'm going to bring that over and give it just a quick douse of that uh, red or of that Barn Red. There we go. And now you can see what I see in my cell phone up there in the upper left corner. It wasn't connected before, so. I'm going to add some vintage photo to these leaves to make them a little more apparent on the outside cover of the envelope that we're working on. And I think the vintage photo and the, the barn red make it very fall-like looking, if you will. And I have the envelope opened up, and I want to glue down that newsprint that I had shown you previously. So let me pull it out and trim it to the appropriate size. And I'm utilizing the Friskers trimmer to do that because I want good, clean, straight lines that will allow me to glue it down without worrying about it folding, it being in my folds, if you will. So let's glue this down and we can glue the flap shut as well. I'm utilizing just a glitter glue 
for no specific reason. Whatever glue I have on my table is what I have a tendency to utilize. So let's get these flaps in place. And there we have the bones of our folder or of our envelope journal, if you will. So not bad. I think we are getting close to having something that actually is going to look pretty darn good. Now I want to add a little bit of gesso to the outside of this because I think that I want it, it to move to the background a little bit. I want to move that back to make my leaves really pop out on the front cover of that. So I'm cleaning off one of my paint brushes that was sitting in, in water with still a little bit of black paint on it from my previous <laughs> project. So let me clean that paint brush and we'll add just a little bit of gesso. Just making sure that I have all the black out of that paint brush. So let's lay some gesso down on the front of this. I want to spread that out just a little bit. I don't want it so white there on the front. So let me grab a baby wipe and let's just tone that down even a little bit more. So I think that looks a lot better. I have this fan brush now that I am just coming back with to add some additional gesso. And once again, with the baby wipe, just to tone it, tone it down. Do the same on the front as well. This is going to be the front. And now I want to cover up that security print on the inside of that envelope. And I have yet another piece of that newsprint that was stained with the coffee when we were coffee staining the envelopes at the very beginning. It got wet when I laid the envelopes on it and the coffee transferred to it. So we're going to make use of that coffee stained newsprint by gluing it on the inside of this flap. Let me ink around the edge so we have that nice rusty hinge look right on the edge of this and we'll lay some glue down and just plop that down, flip it over and trim it to the edge of that envelope. And I think I want that leaf laying right there on the flap. So let me add some glue to the back of that leaf and we'll stick him down there on the flap. And the flap is not lying down. So I feel like I need some weight there. I've pulled out a toilet paper tube, cut it in half, and I have my um, punch. That is a circular punch with a little uh, design around the outside edge. And I'll punch some coffee stain paper in that same punch and glue those together. And I think that will look good there. So let's just glue the coffee stain paper on both sides and then we can have when it is open and when it is shut, you've got something nice looking there. And what I'm actually going to do is use this to attach my closure. I've decided to put some sorry silk around, so we'll get to that. For now, let's just add some rusty hinge to this piece. And I think we are ready to glue this to our flap. That rusty hinge is kind of bright, so I want to vintage it up and tone it down a little bit with this vintage photo before I glue it down. 
give that back a good coat of that vintage photo as well. And we'll glue this into place. Just a little dab of glue. And let's clean that outside, that glue that kind of oozed out. Let's clean that up with a baby wipe. And now let's decorate. So the leaves are just going to be laid down in a random manner like they had fallen off of a tree. We'll put one right there on the inside. We'll wrap some around the outside edge. And I'm just deciding where I'd like those to go. And you know, I made the decision to print both sides of this paper, and that actually kind of worked out good because now I have two colors to choose from on my leaves. Now that I have all my leaves glued down, I went to add a coat of Mod Podge hard coat on top of them to keep them in place, protect them, preserve them on the top of this envelope journal. So let's just get that down. We'll get it down, allow it to dry, and then we'll come back and decide what else we're going to do with this little envelope creation. While that is drying, I am adding a leaf to the front of a signature that I created out of coffee stained paper. So I just cut and trimmed the paper to the width of the two envelopes and the height of the two envelopes, folded it in half out of coffee stained paper, added the leaf on the front, and that is my signature. Now that the back or the front has start dried, I'm coating up the back with some Mod Podge, and I will let that dry as well. And that will provide a good protection for the cover and a good protection for the leaves on the cover keep the leaves in place and make sure that they don't furl or, or come undone. Now we want to work a bit while that is drying on the signature and I pulled out some gold luster wax. We'll be gilding the edges of that signature with that luster wax, just utilizing my finger to do that and adding that luster wax indiscriminately on the front and the back cover of the signature. And throughout the signature, I will open up each page 
add a little luster wax on each page in a nondescript kind of way, as well as giving it a gold paint splatter with my gold paint pen. So now that I have that done, I'm stapling in the signature to this little envelope journal. I have painted all of my staples gold, so we'll put that into place with three staples. There's one and two and number three. And that gives us a good secure signature in this book. And now to kind of finalize the closure, I'm cutting one more of those little circular pieces with my punch and some coffee stain paper. I'm going to get that decorated with that coffee stain paper or covered with the coffee stain paper. We'll ink that up. We we'll use vintage photo and just kind of cover it up and ink it up and go around the edges. And I'll gr grab a strand of sorry silk and choose the length that I want it to be and just glue the end of that sari silk in between the medallion that's already adhered to the book and the one I just created. Now to tie off the sari silk, I need to have some height. So I'm adding two buttons. I have my sari silk that I can now, that's glued in between those two medallions. I have the pockets on the inside, and I'm just storing some of those echo prints that we created in the index card month. And I took that paint pen, and that's what I was illustrating, is that I did some splatters with that paint pen. We have the pocket on the back, and that wraps around and then ties around those two buttons that I've glued into place. And you can see on that top button, I did tie a piece of thread in it. I tied two <clears throat> little washers on the end of the sari silk to give it, or tied a washer on the end of the sari silk to give it a little bit of weight. And that completes week two of the envelopes. So pop on over to our Facebook group, Two Wall Crows Mixed Media, and share what you create with envelopes this week. If you want to do exactly what I did, I'm A-OK -okay with that. That would be wonderful. And if you want to just create something on your own and share that, if you video it, share your video, and we would all love to see. So I shall say bye for now.